Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ainsworth, and we're going to get into our second mastery here, mastery two on solving equations uh, and inequalities, mostly equations of all types. And so here we go. All right, number one, we're going to distribute through this negative two. All right, we're going to distribute it twice. All right, negative two times negative eight v, 16 v, uh, and then negative two times four, that's a negative eight. So I'm going to write down a minus eight is equal to negative 88. I'm going to add eight. And I get 16v is equal to negative 8, 88 plus 8 is negative 80. Divide by 16. And v is equal to hmm, negative 5. Okay? Divide the 2. Use your calculator if you want. doesn't matter. Just check your work as you go. All right? I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to distribute the 5 twice. All right? I get 30 plus 35v minus 4 is equal to 306. Add like terms, 30 minus 4, well, that is a 26. So 26 plus 35b is equal to 306. Subtract 26. And you get 35b is equal to this right here. And let me see, uh, that should be 280. So um, give me a second here. So 280, and then like I said, if you want to use a calculator, just enter in 280, divide by 35, and you get 8. Okay, so divide by 35, and you get B equals 8. There we go. All right, move it on. If I go too fast, remember this is a video, so you can always rewind it. Okay, so distributing through here once and twice like before, we get 40N plus 25 is greater than negative 215. Subtract 25, and you get 40n is greater than negative uh, 240. All right, divide by 40, and you get n is greater than negative 6. All right, 2 times, or 6 times 40 is 240, so 240 divided by 40 is 6. All right, and you got negative there, okay? So let's graph that. So this is greater than... So it's going to be open right here at negative 6, right here, and all values greater than negative 6 are to the right. Okay? So solve and graph. Okay, next one. We've got to uh, distribute through here first. Okay, so we get 5 minus 15. Negative 3 times 6x is negative 18x, less than or equal to negative 136. Combine like terms, negative 10 minus 18x less than or equal to negative 136. Add 10 to combine like terms, and you get negative 18 less than or equal to this, which is negative 126. Like I said before, you may use your calculator, so enter in 126 divided by 18. <sighs> no, I didn't. you got to enter the right numbers here. So 126 divided by 18, 7. So divide by eight, negative 18. Okay, when you do that, the negatives are going to cancel, and you get uh, x not less than or equal to, but greater than or equal to. You've got to switch the inequality here when you divide by a negative. All right, greater than 7. So let's graph that. It's going to be solid now, so this is greater than or equal to 7, and then all value to the right of 7, okay, greater than or equal to. So it's going to be solid, and this one's going to be open. Okay, those are finished. Okay, let's continue. Now we're going to solve by using square roots. So here we go. We're going to add 9. And you get x squared is equal to 25. And then you're going to square root. All right, and x is equal to plus or minus 5. All right, remember, two solutions. All right, I'm talking about 5 and negative 5, okay? Uh, next one, we're going to add 10 first. We're going to isolate the square, and we get 9n squared is equal to negative 166. And we're going to divide by 9, and you get n squared is equal to negative 166 divided by 9. And then you're going to square root. But this is not real. You can't square root a negative. And so there's no solution here. All right, you can't square root a negative. 
and get a real number. It's imaginary, my friends. Okay. Next one we're going to solve by factoring. So let's, let's play the factor game, okay? So what two numbers multiply to 6 and add to negative 7? We've done this a million times. And, well, let me see. 1 times 6 is 6. And if they're both negative, you get negative 7 when you add them. So we're going to factor by grouping. We're going to take x squared minus x minus 6x plus 6. We're going to split the middle term here and here. All right, and factor by grouping. So we're going to factor out the x. We're going to factor out a negative 6. We're still not done factoring. You've got to get into a zero product. We want something times something equals zero. We want a zero product. Okay, so we're not done yet. x minus 6 times x minus 1 equals zero. The common factor is here, and you multiply it by the remaining terms, which is x minus 6. So now you go x minus 6 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, and here x is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so x has to be 1. And you have two solutions there. So you get in what's called a zero product right here. This right here is called a zero product. Why? Well, Guess what? You're multiplying two things that equal 0, and one of them has to be 0, right? Because we know that anything times 0 is 0. That's called a 0 product. you got to get there. Same thing here. We're going to play the factor game again. So what two numbers? Multiply 35 and then add to a negative 12. Well, we know that 7 times 5 is 35, and if they're both negative, a negative plus a negative is a negative. It's a bigger negative, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 5m squared. We're going to split the middle term. I'm going to write down the minus 5 first because I already can see something in common here. And then the minus 7m, and then plus 7 equals 0. I'm going to factor out the 5m. I'm going to factor out the negative 7. And then I'm going to continue factoring out the common factor. Now notice here, there's what's in common. And you multiply it by the remaining terms, 5m minus 7, which is right here. So 5m minus 7. Now I have a zero product, and I set them both equal to zero and solve each separately. Here m is obviously 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. And then here, if you do your little arithmetic, you get 5m equals 7 divided by 5, and you get m equals 7 fifths. Again, two solutions. And once again, this is a video, right? So if I go too fast, which I probably do for 90% of you guys, then rewind it and listen to it again. Study it. Because we're just re reviewing what we've done before many, many times. Okay. And by the way, you can use your notes. You have your notes on this, so you can take them out and start looking at all the work we did in the past. Okay, it might help you. Okay, completing the square. Solving by completing the square. We're going to get that constant on the right, so I'm going to add 60. Okay, and I've got r squared plus 4r plus something is equal to 60 plus something. Here's where I complete the square here. Now I gotta take the four, the middle coefficient right here. I gotta divide it by two and square it, which is two squared or four. So I need to add a four to both sides. That's called in completing the square. So here, uh, and then we play the little factor game. What two numbers multiply to four and add to four? Well, there are two and two, right? So r squared plus two r plus two r. I just split the middle term, plus four equals 64. Factor out the r, factor out the 2, all right, and now you finish r plus 2 times, well, let me see here. The common factor is right here, and i got to multiply it by the remaining factors, r plus 2. And then this is the same as r plus 2 quantity squared equals 64, and at this point, you want to factor by grouping, excuse me, you want to square root. And you're almost done. You get r plus 2 is equal to plus or minus 8. And if you subtract 2, you get r is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 8. And uh, let me see, negative 2 plus 8 is 6. Negative 2 minus 8 is negative 10. So there are my two answers, r is equal to 6 and negative 10. Okay, two solutions.
when you're solving the quadratics. Now, in completing the square, the lead coefficient has to be 1. So the very first thing you got to do is, is divide by 10. So you get x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And then you factor. You play the little factor game right here. Actually, no. You just solve by completing the square. So we're going to add 3. And you get x squared minus 2x plus something is equal to 3 plus something. So now you complete the square. Negative 2 divided by 2 squared is negative 1 squared, which is 1. So I need to add 1 to both sides. And now you play the factor game here. What two numbers multiply to 1 and add to negative 2? How about negative 1 and negative 1? So here, x squared minus x minus x. Split the middle term. Plus 1 equals 4. Factor out the x. Factor out the minus 1. I'll put a minus 1 right there. And you get x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 4. But that's the same as x minus 1 squared equals 4. And at this point, you do the same thing as we did over here on the left. You square root. And you get x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus 2. Then add 1. You get x equals 1 plus or minus 2. So 1 plus 2 gives you 3. 1 minus 2 equals negative 1. So x is equal to negative 1 and 3. There's your solutions right there. Okay, that's completing the square. And once again, you've done this before many times. Go back, open up your notes and in your previous units here, and voila, you have everything there. That's if you stay organized and you have your notes handy, right? Which is obviously an important thing to do. So now we want to use a quadratic formula. So you have to know what it is in order to apply it. So always have it memorized. We need to write down A, B, and C first. So A, B, and C. So A is obviously 7. B is 8. C is 8. So here we go. So X is equal to the opposite of B. So 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times A times C divided by 2 times 7. There we go. And let's see, what is this? So negative 8 plus or minus the square root. So 8 squared is 64. So 64 minus 4 times 7 times 8. You get negative 160. So negative 160 divided by 14. OK, and guess what? Right there, that's not real. So that tells me there's no solution here, no real solution. OK, all right. Next one, uh, I got to set this equal to 0. So that's important. You can't use the quadratic formula unless it's set equal to 0. So set equal to 0 first. So keep that in mind. Uh, so when you do that, you have 2n squared plus 4n minus 6 equals 0. There's a, b, c. So a is 2, b is 4, c is negative 6. And so n equals here negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4ac, which is 4 times 2 times negative 6, divided by 2 times a, which is 2. So we need to simplify this. So we have negative 4 plus or minus. 16 plus, because there's double negative in here. I see it right here. And let's see here. We got 8 times 6, 48, divided by 4. So that's 50, 64. Ooh. So negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 64 divided by 4. So you have negative 4 plus or minus 8 divided by 4. So negative 4 plus 8 divided by 4. That's 4 divided by 4, 1. Here, negative eight, negative four minus eight divided by four is negative twelve divided by four, and or negative three. So here, n equals one, and negative three is my two results. Once again, these can have up to two solutions because they're quadratics. You either have two solutions, one solution, or sometimes whew, you don't have any solutions at all. Well, that is a real solutions. Okay. All right, and that's it.
okay all right now remember this is a video right so if you need you can pause play and rewind and develop some mastery and of course you got to practice okay do your best and practice for mastery this is mr ainsworth i'll see you in the next mastery number three see you then bye bye